Art is like a sacrament, making something invisible visible. There are three purposes. One, to glorify God as a sacrifice of praise. Two, to aid the faithful in prayer. And three, to evangelize the souls. Why we should create sacred art for all of those reasons, but also for the artist's own salvation and sanctification. Effective sacred art helps all who look at it and pray with it to grow in knowledge and love of God. Making visible um, and intelligible the truths of the Catholic Church that may not be understood as well discursively, like through reading or through a lecture, that the visual can impact the soul and transmit knowledge to our souls. St. Teresa of Avila recommended praying with an image, an inspirational image of Jesus to help us to contemplate his sacred humanity. The action of just looking at something and looking at something for a long period of time. And I say countercultural because we live in this like society, this culture where we're just scrolling and we see so many images so fast. So the artist, in a sense, is, is completely the opposite of that. Just to look at something and to study it and to appreciate it and its beauty and its form and then to try and represent that or to sort of reimagine that in, in a sense too uh, is, is completely uh, countercultural. And then you kind of take that and then apply it to something like the crucifix and it becomes a form of meditation, even a form of prayer. And I found it to be a really powerful transporting experience to really to be able to dwell and to imagine um, what the stigmata looks like, for example. Um, and then ultimately the, the higher form of expression is then to, to sort of communicate that visually to an audience. Um, so it's like, in a way, it's like a really direct path to God. Um, and it's really a form of prayer, I would say. Yeah, I think we, we shouldn't only preserve sacred art, but, but we should uh, promote it and endorse it and increase the amount of artists producing sacred art. There used to be a great need in the church and, and a general cultural consensus for the, for the value of, of public art, but specifically sacred art within the church. And I think some of that's been lost throughout the ages. So it's not just a question of preserving what we already have, which of course we should do, but also making new art as well. Sacred art bridges the gap in our perception and our thinking, showing the unity of body and soul and the unity of heaven and earth. So on the one hand, we have a very anti-incarnational kind of mindset, a culture of death that degrades the dignity of the human body, objectifying it, just focusing on material pleasure or a material world. And sacred art shows not only beautiful images of the human body um, that are in purity, not objectified or sexualized, but also glorified resurrected bodies, showing us the dignity and the destiny of our incarnate personhood. Sacred art also represents this invisible spiritual world. It shows us angels and demons and ideals, such as the supernatural virtues. Um, which allow us to see with our eyes this intangible reality, making it more present to us. But I genuinely believe that sacred art is important, essential in all times and in all places. It's an irrepressible manifestation of man's love for God and desire to offer worship. Personally, for me and my own story, it was through beauty that I started to uh, understand the importance of order in the world. And that led me to a belief system, to a belief system that the universe was created in an orderly fashion. And everything points towards God. Um, and once you start seeing those, that order there, um, it's pretty, pretty difficult to ignore. Now, as an artist, it's extraordinary that the work that I'm doing is contemplating the face of God, is representing the face of God, and my labor and my talents are used in developing this relationship with my Lord and Savior, and then sharing the fruits of that relationship with others.
we're hungry for that, you know, as, as a Catholic population, as, as, a, as faith, people of faith. So um, the, the, really the door is open. We need, we need you to step through the door um, and to, to sort of join forces. You know, the more artists that are making beautiful things for God's glory, the better, the better for the church and the better for humanity. Being a sacred artist, it's a really powerful um, way to do that. Um, and it's like a fulfillment of that vocation um, in that, you know, art isn't just sort of a hobby or it's not just meant to um, as a career. And that stuff's important. But what's most important is can what I do in this life with the gifts that God has given me bring people to, to Jesus? Um, so I would, I would encourage anyone who's thinking about, you know, being an artist to, um, to have that as sort of your end goal. I would encourage artists of all ages and backgrounds to use their talents to serve God and neighbor. However, I would propose that sacred art should be approached as a vocation and not merely an avocation or a way to earn a livelihood. The artist should discern if God is calling him or her to make art for Mother Church and for the faithful. I would say that everyone who's pursuing a vocation in sacred art should resolutely pursue mastery in our craft. Sacred artists have a special obligation to cultivate mastery in our discipline because we are making work not for ourselves, but for the glory of God and for the edification of souls. As an artist, there is nothing more wonderful than seeing someone pray with the work of your hands. It's a greater experience than having your painting in the most prestigious gallery in the world or having any worldly honors or fortune that people can pray with a painting or a work of art that I have made in order to pray with the saints and grow in relationship with God.